I think uh, Gen AI is really good at making smart people smarter, and more efficient. It's not it's not good at uh, you know making novices brilliant uh, because you know we've heard of uh, you know Gen AI hallucinations. Well, you know that'll probably contribute to, you know to, to that level of uh, you know feedback you get. But you know Gen AI, uh, you know in a sense is kind of working with somebody that gives you suggestions and. You know, not all the people you work with are brilliant. Hey, today we're going to dive into the exciting world of Gen AI and AI in general in Tesla Automation. Joining us, we have expert Mark Creamer, who's going to help uncover how Gen AI streamlines test processes at the push of a button. You'll discover how symbolic AI transforms user stories into optimized test cases, achieving better functional test coverage. You're going to learn how AI could boost collaboration and sprint teams and explore the benefits and challenges of AI integration and testing, plus all other kinds of awesome insights from Mark on AI's impact in testing. If you don't know, Mark is currently the president and CEO of Conform IQ, which focuses on improving the quality and efficiency of software testing. With over 40 years of industry experience, he focuses on taking software testing to the next level. And in this episode, he provides AI insights that you probably haven't heard anywhere else. You want to listen all the way to the end? Don't miss it. Check it out. Before we get into it, are you ready to jumpstart your testing process? Meet Conform IQ, the leader in AI-powered test design automation. With Conform IQ's automated test design process, you can generate faster and better tests without scripting. So experience seamless, scriptless automation and join the smart AI-led testing revolution today. See how Conform IQ can transform your testing process by requesting a free demo now. Support the show, head on over to testguild.me forward slash AI demo and see it for yourself. Hey, Mark, welcome to the Guild. Hey, Joe, uh, thanks for the intro and happy to be here. Awesome. I, I think before we get into it, maybe you could talk a little bit about your journey, how you got into testing. Uh, well, <laughs> I got into testing uh, uh, when I joined uh, Conformic uh, a little over uh, 12 years ago. Uh, and uh, you know, been involved in a variety of different software companies, but uh, uh, you know, Conform IQ you know, has been uh, you know focused on delivering you know high technology, you know, advanced uh, uh, testing solutions uh, for for over twenty years. And, and I joined uh, uh, twelve years ago. Nice. So what's interesting is I believe you know Conform IQ has been using AI for a while now. But recently, with the rise of Gen AI, I'm just curious to get your opinion on where we were before and maybe how Gen AI, how it changes things or how it doesn't change things or how it might be different from what we've seen in the past. Um, yeah, interesting question. Something I've been contemplating <laughs> for, for a while now. Uh, you know, certainly um, Gen AI is the, uh, you know, the uh, proud uh, Proud new baby in the AI world, but uh, interestingly, you know, AI has been around for forever. You know, you know, even when I was working on my MBA in the early '80s, I did a project on AI. So, uh, you know, it's uh, been uh, you know, our, the technology's been around a long time. The question is, you know, why is it so much more prevalent and so much more interesting today? Uh, you know, versus you know, you know what it was in in, uh, in years past. So. Um, but interestingly, um, you know, AI has been used in testing and it has actually it's been used in uh, uh, Conform IQ's products uh, uh, for, for over 20 years. Uh, the question is, or the point is, what type of AI? You know, and, uh, you know, the kind of AI that, uh, you know, I think people are familiar with, uh, but you know, don't kind of consider it as part of the new revolution of Gen AI are things like you know natural language processing, uh, uh, you know things like uh, uh, vision recognition systems, and uh, interesting one is uh, symbolic AI. Symbolic AI is actually kind of a technology that was uh, you know most visibly deployed. Uh, uh, Probably in the late, uh, I think, '90s, uh, when uh, you know IBM built a product called uh, Deep Blue, which was uh, 
the, the system that beat uh, Gary Kasparov in, in chess. Uh, and, you know, that's a technology that uh, we've had in, in our product, you know, for, for years. And, you know, the way I look at it uh, versus the older technology or the older AI, you know, uh, versus uh, the, the new AI is, uh, you know, certainly the, uh, the older AI, um, uh, was more buried into uh, the solutions that were delivered and not kind of the leading, uh, hey, everything is AI type, uh, uh, you, know, you know, recognition that Gen AI has uh, in its product. And the way I look at it, um, you know, we can, uh, you know, figure out how to, you know, leverage uh, the value that AI has been delivering for years, and I can talk about that, how I think it compares to Gen AI, and then talk about the combination of the two and how we can deliver even more value to our customers that need to do you know, efficient, high reliability testing. Nice. So you make a great point. AI has been involved in a lot of these testing tools for years, but for, uh so what made Gen AI put the spotlight on it? Is it because it's easier to use and see than what people may not have known? Like, hey, this application was already using AI because they didn't see it, though. They didn't know the power of it. Yeah, no, I think the whole, uh, you, know, you know, ease of interaction and the availability of uh, Gen AI today um, is uh, something that is, you know, kind of consumed, consumed and infatuated the world. Um where, you know, b- before uh, the usability and ease of access for, for AI uh, was more buried into products like natural language processing and symbolic AI, uh, it, it, it's used uh, in, an, in a platform or an infrastructure. Now, Gen AI is its own platform and, you know, interestingly, can do a lot of the things uh, that uh, the uh, AI that's been around for a while uh, can do. But uh, on the other hand, it also presents some risk and some variabilities, you know, that, uh, you know, the predictable, high, highly reliable, you know, AI that's been used for years uh, that, you know, anybody who wants to embrace it needs to be aware of. You know, symbolic AI is really more of an embedded technology. Uh, you know, so you, that's why symbolic AI doesn't have the recognition uh, that um, Gen AI has, because Gen AI is, hey, it's a user inter- you know, you know, interaction uh, and uh, you know, easily accessible to anybody who wants to use it, where symbolic AI is you know, uh, a technology that's embedded into uh, you know, model-based testing framework or, or a test case generation framework. You know, so, um, the, you know, the discussions we had up front where you say, oh, well, I use symbolic AI versus Gen AI. Well, it, it's it's not really that way. So I, just, I think we need to be, um, you know, clear that I, I don't choose one or the other. Um, it, it's just that symbolic AI is embedded you know, and, you know, the national language processing stuff is embedded in, in these test case generation solutions where you may not know you're using AI. So that, that, that's why one is prevalent, you know, or one is less prevalent and Gen AI is really prevalent because you're all about using AI versus, you know, getting a problem solved. And once again, we're not saying one's better than the other, I guess. It's- right. A different application, but is one safer or more private than the other? Like, if someone's concerned about uh, Gen AI leaking things, I guess, or you training models, does is there a one to one? Is it an embedded uh, symbolic AI better for that, or more private or safer? Um, yeah, you know, that that's that's a good question. Uh, you know, and symbolic AI is a an embedded technology that uh, is controlled, and uh, what, what are they? Um, uh, you know, uh, you know, the Accentures and the IBMs of the world call it responsible AI, you know, is, um, you know, it's very well defined and doesn't have the, uh, the security issues and, and exposures that a Gen AI can have. So, um, 
you really, uh, you know, symbolic is, is controlled and well-defined. Uh, you know, if you look at Gen AI and how it's implemented internally, uh, you know, if you uh, are deploying that technology within your organization, uh, you have to you know, ensure that, you know, the, uh, the models you're using, the LLM, you know, the, the large language models, uh, um, are constrained and implemented in a way that they don't impact, uh, you know, customer data and those kind of things. Because you are, uh, if you don't do it intelligently, uh, you are potentially exposed there. And uh, symbolic AI does not have that issue. All right, so that's a good point. Uh, when you see discussions around AI and testing, a lot of times people pick on Gen AI uh, for, for things like hallucinating. And I think they equate all types of AI with Gen AI. And it sounds like Gen AI is just a sliver of the whole AI pie yes. and that you've been using it for years reliably within the product, it sounds like. Is that correct? That's correct, yes. Nice. So maybe some examples then of how you were using it like for testing specifically before Gen AI. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So you, you can relate it to, but we've been using it for automated uh, test case creation for years. Gen AI does that. Yeah, interesting. Um, the uh, the other thing is the automatic script uh, and scripting uh, generation for uh, you know going to automated test execution. You know, we've been using uh, you know. You know, NLP, natural language processing, to, to get to that, you know, in an automated way for years. Uh, and if you look at, uh, the test case generation that we do, uh, with the symbolic AI, uh, it, it, ha- it has some unique characteristics. Uh, you know, one is it, it creates a, a deterministic set of test cases. And, and what does that mean? You know, it's, it's predictable. You present the, you know, the problem, the fundamentally, the requirements, you know, in, into uh, you know, our environment. And based on those requirements, it'll provide you 100% coverage of those requirements for functional testing um, and do that deterministically. So uh, what that means is I have the same problem set, I get the same result. With Gen AI, eh, you know, you get... Um, uh, you know, basically a different answer one day versus the other. Hopefully no hallucinations in there, you know, as part of the process. But, you know, in, in the uh, uh, symbolic AI environment, you get a predictable and uh, our uh, algorithms and approaches actually deliver an optimized set of test cases. You know, so uh, not just test cases, but we pretty much guarantee uh, the least number of test cases to provide 100% coverage uh, of uh, the, the testing requirement that uh, the test designer has. You can't get that with Gen AI. So I would think you're kind of in a pickle because a lot of these tools that come out with test case generation are Gen AI, and they, they give a bad experience. But you've been doing it for years using symbolic AI, which sounds like it's, it's built better for that use case. Um, how do you... How do you explain that to someone? I mean, you just explained it great right now, but is there like an example you can give? Like, hey, here's uh, using symbolic AI compared to Gen AI, uh, and here are the the, the differences. Uh, interesting question. Um, so, yeah, I, I think you have to step back and say, okay, what what do the two approaches do? Yeah. Test case generation, okay, and, and you know what what's your goal with test case generation? Because uh, if your goal is just test case generation, Gen AI is a perfect solution. You know, if uh, your goal is to have an optimized set of test cases or a very focused set of test cases based on, you know, your particular, uh, you know, objectives, eh, Gen AI can't do that. You know, that's where the symbolic AI uh, delivers, you know, significant value. The other thing that's important you know, is the predictability and the repeatability of Gen AI. So if you have like compliance requirements or, you know, financial, uh, you know, you know, uh, testing requirements that, uh, you know, present a significant amount of risk associate, associated with the application you're developing. And you really need to do some very focused, intense, uh, 
you know, QA and regression testing, you can't necessarily use Gen AI to target, you know, specific areas like that, where, uh, you know, with the symbolic AI, you have the, uh, uh, the ability to, you know, focus and target and optimize the type of testing that you're doing. Love it. So I like to give people some tips if they're listening. One thing is if they're looking at AI solutions, they want to do test case generation, especially if you're in a regulated, regulated environment. They should ask, I guess, is it using symbolic AI or a, a gen AI? And if it's using just gen AI, they probably would want to be cautious, I would think. You know, my um, you know, suggestion is, is they just be aware of what they get with gen AI versus uh, you know, symbolic AI. Because the, the goal is to have the uh, you know, repeatability and the definability of what you're testing and how efficiently you're testing it. You, you don't get that with Gen AI. You know, if you have a, you know, low risk, you know, website type application, and I just want to do some exploratory testing, Gen AI is great. You know, you don't, you don't need to deal with that. But, you know, if, when you look at where does Gen AI deliver value and it can deliver value complementary to symbolic AI, which is, uh, you know, something that I think every uh, buddy who wants to use AI should be aware of is, you know, where do I get the most value? And, and you know, frankly, there are some, some challenges with using symbolic AI. You, you have to provide a well-defined environment and a model-based environment uh, to, to do that, where, hey, I can use Gen AI to help me create those models. And make things a lot more faster and efficient and do, you know, co-pilot and assist the people to get to the value that the uh, symbolic AI delivers, you know, versus, oh, let me use Gen AI to generate test cases. No, let me use Gen AI to help me be more efficient in create and taking advantage of symbolic AI as part of the testing process. Does that make sense? It, it does. Absolutely. So. What, what is Gen AI good at then? Like like you said, does it just give you ideas then that you know or create a model that you then use to train the symbolic AI? Like uh, any, how does that work? I, I think, I think uh, Gen AI is really good at making smart people smarter and more efficient. It's not, it's not good at, uh, you know, making novices brilliant mm -hmm. uh, because, you know, we've heard of, uh, you know, Gen AI hallucinations. Well, you know, that'll probably contribute to, you know, to, to that level of, you uh, you know, feedback you get, but, you know, Gen AI, uh, you know, in a sense is kind of working with somebody th that gives you suggestions and, you know, not all the people you work with are brilliant, you know, so uh, you have to assess and, and, and really be uh, uh, aware of what it is you're getting from interacting, you know, with, with a, a Gen AI framework like chat, chat GPT where, you know, with a, a symbolic AI and a structured approach, um, your, your output is predictable and well-defined and, and uh, you know, reusable, where uh, the quality of uh, the product in a, uh, using a symbolic AI uh, is, uh, as I mentioned, well-defined, well where it's, it's not so much with Gen AI. And it sounds like a lot of people, when they, like you said, if you just want test case generation for the sake of test case generation, you don't care. Gen AI is just going to spit it out. But if you have like areas of risk and things you want, just the, like you said, the optimal amount of test cases, symbolic AI is the way to go. Uh, that's, uh, that would be our recommendation. Perfect. All right. So I, I think we have the gist of the differences. I'm just curious to know, like, how how else can uh, can AI help us? I, I mean, test case generation is, is is big, but are there any other areas of testing that you find AI is uh, particularly really good at helping people with? Uh, yeah, so the the way we look at it at uh, ConformiQ is, uh, you know, we we have a, a platform that we know works and we've been delivering for years, and how can we, uh, you know, make uh, the usability of our platform more efficient. And we see a number of opportunities uh, uh, to use Gen AI uh, to make our existing high-valued, you know, test case generation and script generation and, 
intelligent, uh, you know, automated testing uh, frameworks, uh, much more efficient. And, and how do we do that? So um, you know, we've got, uh, you know, some products that are focused on, you know, capturing requirements and using those requirements to build tests and, and so on. And then how to get from, uh, you know, a BDD, uh, you know, behavior driven development, uh, you know, testing process uh, to uh, a simplified auto- automation process, you know, automated, automated execution. Well, you can use Gen AI, you know, to, uh, you know, f- fundamentally fill out the, uh, the forms, uh, needed to, uh, go from, Hey, I know what I want to build. I know what I, ha- how to test it, but I'm not an automation expert, but I can use Gen AI to solve that test automation process. Uh, and, you know, with a push of a button, you know, I- you know, integrate, you know, the, uh, Application under test with the tests that are the result of the behavior driven development and get to automated execution on my own desktop. That's really cool. You know, so that's where Gen AI complements, uh, you know, testing, uh, you know, in, uh, behavior driven development. But now you think about, uh, behavior driven development, you know, it's really kind of focused on scenarios and user stories and, and really doesn't take into account the entire system. You go know, from, from end to end with all the options and all the, uh, you know, uh, you know, interactions and possible interactions that, uh, uh, you know, in, in these high uh, intensity, you know, compliant and or, you know, financial testing areas like, you know, banks and so on. Um, it doesn't test, you know, the end to end, uh, you know, scenarios. And, and how do I get to that? And do that efficiently and effectively. Well, what if I could take those user stories and kind of combine them together into a system level model and then take that system level model and apply symbolic AI uh, on top of it uh, to uh, generate an optimized set of test cases that allows you to test your entire system? You know, and that's where uh, Gen AI can contribute, uh, you know, significantly to getting from, uh, the user story or scenario level to the system level modeling. You know, and, and that's where, uh, you know, we at uh, Conform IQ are, uh, you know, looking at, uh, providing those kind of solutions as well. So you take the, uh, user stories that you are, are testing, you know, at the, uh, you know, unit level. And combine those to create a uh, system architecture and use the intelligence of figuring out how all those user stories go together to uh, define uh, the uh, system level model. You know, and that's where Gen AI can help a bunch. And then you have the environment that now gives you uh, the test case generation and the clarity that you need to do a very efficient end-to-end testing. All right. So I just want to explore that a little bit more just to get some clarity around it. So if someone has a bunch of BDD feature files. Yeah. And they may be caught up in like maybe their particular feature they're releasing for that sprint. Right. And maybe kind of forget about the the overall, how does it fit with what's there already, yeah. what's going down the road. So based on that, Symbolic AI is smart enough to take it and come up with a system level model then it can maybe show them maybe areas that they they missed or areas that are overcovered or undercovered. Yeah. So, um, so, so I think we call it, you know, you know, basically the, the symbolic AI framework and, you know, uh, because it's, it's the application of symbolic AI that, that allows you to do this. But, um, the, uh, what, you know, you think about, you know, Hey, I'm, I'm working on a sprint and I, I, I need to, you know, test the, uh, functionality for this new loan that I'm going to, uh, you know, process. Well, that new loan fits into a loan portfolio. It, the, there, there's credit checks and there's all, all these other, uh, you know, components of the end to end application, uh, that, um, uh, need to be considered before you actually release this new product. You know, so 
I, I do my user story and, you know, I, I qualify this person for the loan and, you know, we get them signed in and not, whatever. But that needs to be tested in the context of the overall system, uh, you know, which uh, are a bunch of other user stories. And, and that, that, that user story needs to be you know, integrated into the big picture and the testing of that new functionality needs to be tested not only you know in its own uh you know environment or at the unit level it needs to be tested in the context of the overall system you know and, and that's what we're uh you know talking about here is uh leveraging the work that's been done at the sprint level to uh drive the automated creation of test cases uh, in an optimal way for the entire system. So we can use those uh, user stories and, uh, you know, Gherkin descriptions and so on to create that system model. So then does the system model then create its own test automatically without yeah. you having to write the yeah, features? Yeah, there, 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 there you go. Yeah. So you're testing at the system, uh, at, at the unit level, and then the system model creates an optimized set of test cases that, for testing the entire system, not just the, the, the component or the user story or scenario that uh, you're integrating into that system environment. Nice. So, you know, a lot of times when we talk about testing, a lot of people talk about shift left, shift right. It sounds like the system level model can help address both areas almost. Yeah, I, I kind of uh, take advantage of that uh, <laughs> uh, description of shifting left. It's more about starting right. Uh, you know, and you know, starting correctly, where you're you're capturing, uh, you know, what it is you're building uh, properly and with the context, and, and that's where um, Jen and I can help a, a lot with. You can use the uh, natural language processing uh, uh, capabilities of, of Gen AI to automatically generate uh, the BDD scripts and the BDD tests uh, and the BDD descriptions uh, in in Gherkin. So you can use Gen AI to do that, uh, and, and by doing it uh, and starting properly with uh, you know the uh, the requirements of testers and the developers you know working together, uh, you can fundamentally you know, drive the testing process much more efficiently because you have a well defined description uh, to help drive uh, the. Uh, End to end testing as well as the, uh, uh, you know, agile and, uh, you know, testing that's, that's required, you know, a, as you build, uh, uh, the, the product along the way. So, um, the symbolic, uh, model based approach, you know, really addresses, uh, the, uh, the efficiency of the, uh, regression testing that needs to happen at the system level and uh, the uh, BDD approach uh, provides the agility uh, and uh, the uh, testing that needs to happen at the uh, unit level. Right. So I don't know why this, this idea just came to my head. I could be completely off base. Let's see. So if I have a, a system level model uh, that understands the system, if someone checks in code that changes a feature that touches code B and Z. A lot of times people like just run all the BD, run all the tests. We don't care. Uh, does this help narrow it down? Like, hey, this was checked in. You only need to run these two test cases. You have a hot fix. Run these two test cases. You're covered. Am I off base with that? You're in the ballpark. All right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, but <laughs> what, what, what um, uh, you know, what, what, you you do it at the system level, and you have the flexibility to say, "Oh, okay, I I just updated, you know, uh, you know, a, a certain set of code, you know, and and put that into the system." So I don't need to and test test the entire system, but you know, I maybe need to, uh, you know, see how um, the new code works with a couple of other components, so I can take a piece and specify a piece of that system, generate the test cases just 
for that new code and, and the environment that it, it specifically interacts with and just target the testing, you know, for that particular area, you know, so you can, you know, test that new code at the unit level, but hey, I really need to make sure it works in the context of the environment that it interacts with at the system level. But I don't want to run, you know, a thousand test cases. I just want to run, you know, 30, which tests the area that um, it's particularly impacted. So, so, so yeah, you, you're in the ballpark. <laughs> What I love about this, though, is uh, kind of a hidden feature, it sounds like. Uh, you know, I worked for a large enterprise. We had eight sprint teams, eight people on a team. It was chaos. It almost seems like the system level model, once again, I could be off base, almost helps with collaboration or communication, uh, where you actually have something you can point to, get people talking, thinking, innovating. Uh, is that another, like maybe not offhand, but another undocumented feature of this approach? Um, well, you know, interestingly, the collaboration uh, is a key component I see at uh, uh, both ends of the, you know, unit and system level testing because um, uh, you know, collaboration, uh, you know, AI doesn't really drive that. So you have to do collaboration, one. Uh, you know, two, um, you know, one of the unique uh, components that we deliver as part of our uh, uh, BDD solution uh, is uh, not only a textual description that you get through Gherkin, coincidentally uh, creates a model. You know, so you have a picture and the verbal, um, uh, you know, view of what it is you're testing and what it is you're building. And you get the same value. Um, you know, at the, uh, the system level, you have the, the visual model of how everything connects and flows. And, you know, there's, uh, you know, you talk about collaboration. Well, you know, one of the real values of having a picture, uh, and being able to look at how things are connected and how things flow, um, uh, really facilitates the collaboration. And we've gotten that from, uh, our customers at, at both levels, at the BDD level and the system level, having that picture in the model delivers real value. So, so yeah, you 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 hit the nail on that one. All right. So another one then. <laughs> Once again, random thought. Uh, if you go into like a sprint planning, you have like eight teams using a visual model. You could probably say, okay, my story actually has a dependency on this team. Is that something it could help with collaboration or, or help uh, you know planning? Oh, oh yeah, absolutely. You know, and uh, having the the model view of how things work together um, helps significantly. And, and not only at the the front end, but at the back end, where you 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 know, verify and validate that hey, I built this and I, I did these things and I, I made sure that you know we expected this information from you know from this group or this function that was being built. So, so yeah, a- absolutely the. The visual model uh, provides a significant value to, uh, in the collaboration side. I, I think the past few questions, we, you kind of addressed uh, how AI isn't really replacing people. It's repla- replacing tasks that are kind of grunt work and kind of making it where collaboration is becoming now at the forefront, which it always should be rather than the grunt work. Uh, that's that's a message I'm getting almost. Um, yeah, so uh, absolutely. Yeah. You know, um, I don't know that it replaces all the grunt work, but I, I think it more makes, you know, smart people smarter. Um, but, you know, you, you got to have collaboration regardless of whether or not you have AI or not. You know, and, and, you know, you know, God forbid, you know, AI, you know, provide the innovation <laughs> function, you know, at some point, you know, hopefully that'll also, you know, you know, come, you know, from, uh, Real intelligence versus artificial intelligence, but uh, collaboration has to happen regardless. And, and you know, you know the, the frameworks and tools that we provide really enable that collaboration. Uh, so, Mark, I'm just jumping into the mind of a listener. They're probably saying, "Oh, this sounds great, but it won't work for my application." Uh, if someone wants to check out Conform IQ, is there a way they can actually see how it works and how it could apply to that particular tech stack? Maybe. Uh, 
Yeah, um, you know, it's it's interesting depending on where you're coming from. You know, you know, if you're looking at the system level model, you know, uh, you know the way we engage there is, is more uh, defining a proof of concept. You know, at the BDD level, um, you know, it's this you know, go to uh, the Alaska market pace and download us and, you know, you know, you know, start using it, you know, so it, depending on, you know, the, the approach and the problem you're trying to solve, uh, there's a lot of, you know, ways that you can uh, get access. And, uh, you know, if you're interested, you know, we have a lot of videos and, uh, you know, nothing better than a real time demo uh, to, uh, uh, you know, take a look and see how, uh, all the approaches work together and have a discussion about where to get started, depending on where you're coming from. Okay, Mark, before we go, is there one piece of actual advice you can give to someone to help them with their AI automation testing efforts? And what's the best way to find or contact you? Well, hey, um, check the link below. <laughs> 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 but uh, no, um, yeah, let's have a discussion. Uh, you know, let, let's engage. Uh, uh, reach out to uh, conformiq uh, uh, you know, dot com and uh, we'll set up a demo and a discussion to talk about how uh, this best applies to your environment.